Mega Mechatronics. Okay, we're down in the lab and we picked up one of these super value hot plates. This one's called a Von Chef, uh, Chef with spelled with an S, and this thing is rated for 750 watts. We got a thermal camera, so we'll see uh, where the heat's coming from on this particular model. I am, I'm sure they're they're very similar in design. And uh, we'll do an example of a surface mount repair uh, using um, an LED star, a Cree star. And I also picked up some of these off of eBay, these copper stars. So the advantage is uh, the copper is going to be more thermally conductive. In addition, they uh, connect the center pad here. The heat sink pad for the LED is uh, part of the star. So they're are potential advantages to using something like this for a high power LED system. All right, let's get into this. All right, well, let's take a closer look at one of these sync pad stars and see uh, what's how it's made, what's going on in there. So we'll just fatigue uh, a group of these off or that support bar on the bottom of this package. So you just bend it back and forth and it will fatigue. Break off and then we will fatigue just a single one to uh, cut open here and see what's going on. Just fixture it in the vise and cut down to basically the sink pad surface so that we could see inside. So I just used a WD-40, high speed steel cutter, uh, end mill, no issues there. So let's take a look inside and the that sink, that center pad that the LED solders to is basically the base. So it's nothing very special, just, they just remove that uh, dielectric insulator surface um, and left that exposed and there is a small cavity. Okay, moving on to the hot plate, let's uh, use our thermal camera and see how this thing performs. So I just plugged it in. I'm using my finger to target the um, XR camera. It's got the zoom extended range um, lens in it. We'll try to focus it. And I could probably um, figure out the, how, the temperature increase right now I'll use the video footage to kind of estimate that and I wanted to keep all the footage in here so you could see I'm gonna speed it up three times right here 3x so we're increasing you in you probably noted that banana shape so it's like it's missing uh, the elements near the knob. So this particular model towards the control knob of the hot plate is going to be the cold side of it. And um, I'll actually, I throw it up there thinking it would be a good spreader, but it's aluminum and you can't get um, thermal imaging data from raw aluminum. Uh, I guess if I coated it or put some tape on it, it may work. So getting up to around uh, processing temps for reflowing and um, just kind of playing around here um, making sure the data is probably um, usable okay let's look at removing the LED chip from a, a PCB board or in this case this is an aluminum star aluminum uh, star and I'll zoom in here a little bit. So it's starting off at room temperature. So I place it down and then I'll plug it in and I'll use the thermal camera to get an idea. So I skipped way ahead. We're getting close to the rework temperature or the correct uh, transition temperature that we need to achieve to pull the LED off safely. So we're getting really close there. And if you look at those flux, uh, the flux on the uh, power input um, pads, um, you see those big blobs of solder. You'll see those right there moving around. So we're pretty much ready to remove this LED chip. Um, 
so I'll pull it off and um, I think I turned off the hot plate as well and let me grab another tool to kind of hold it down so I can pull that chip off so there you go it's pulled off and I kind of hover it over just to make sure I don't thermally shock it maybe I didn't need to do that just being extra cautious okay now I'm just testing this chip and make sure I completely understand uh, how it's working and just checking for any shorts and then here we're purging some uh, lead uh, tin solder and spread it out there I went a little heavy because there is a depression in the middle where that sink pad is and we will orient the LED chip and place it on there and looking at the XML2 a data sheet for lead based solder uh, the peak temperature is 215 degrees Celsius we need to maintain that within 5 degrees Celsius for 10 to 30 seconds and there are recommended ramp rates okay and let's start the processing so here's a new um, LED star or board and the chip and we fast forwarded to the end here and we're at the right right near the max temperature T and we'll help maintain that and start slowly ramping it down by hovering it like that and then I'm doing a little experiment here so I'm pre tinning a new star a new board so I'll pre tin it before um, just kind of experimenting here see the solder paste flows a little more because it's warmer and we'll place the LED chip on there. And here, so I'm removing the first one we did there, so the ones with the soldered uh, pads. And then we have that new one I just did. The pre tin one is the, the higher one you see there. It's moving into position. So I'm going to pull the other one off. I'll move that to a colder spot. Pull that chip off and then again start ramping ramping it down or maintaining the temperature for 10 to 30 seconds and then ramping it down okay so here's that new one where I did the pre-10 and just checking for shorts and we'll do a test here with power and there we go we're blinded and I noted some um, a couple like solder balls on e each side of the LED chip after soldering and it looks like there is this masking removed creating like a little peninsula and if we look at the unprocessed stars you could see that little peninsula there 